The wait is finally over. We have finally got our hands on the all-new Suzuki V-Storm SX. Now, we got to ride this motorcycle yesterday and we took it out on some lovely roads leading to Leh, which is where this motorcycle basically belongs. So, what's on offer? Let's find out. So let's start with the design highlights of the V-Storm SX. Now, as you can see, this has the typical V-Storm look. It looks like a mini V-Storm, that's what it is. So at the front, you have this nice beak and it has uh, the typical styling of an ADV. Now, uh, the headlamp is the same unit as the Jixxer, so these are full LED headlamps. And then uh, the most important change is, of course, at the front, uh, it has got longer travel suspension and the wheel size, well, it is a 19-inch wheel. Now, uh, the regular Jixxer has a 17-inch wheel. So this is what sets it apart because this has a more adventure oriented front end, if we can say that. Now, apart from that, you also get this uh, small windscreen over here and it does a decent job from saving you from the wind blast. Uh, we didn't get to ride it at high speeds today, but it is quite decent. Now, apart from that, if you come uh, towards the side, the tank is the same as the Jixxer. So it is of 12 liters of capacity and uh, the engine also is exactly the same. It, it's a 249cc unit and uh, same power output and same torque. Even the gearing is exactly the same as uh, the regular Jixxer. Now, uh, the seat, it gets a split seat setup and you've also got this luggage rack over here. So if you plan to go on long rides, well, this will help you. You can mount your luggage right here and of course you can get going. Now, apart from that, the bike, it's quite compact. The wheelbase is actually 100 millimeters longer than the Jixxer. And that's because it has a relaxed rake of 27 degrees. And of course, most of that is down to the geometry because of the bigger front wheel. Now at the back, the wheel size is exactly the same and it has got new semi-block pattern tires. These are uh, MRF Mo Grip tires. So uh, again, it looks like a proper adventure bike. It is small and everything about it, I think design-wise, is very cohesive. I mean, it doesn't look disproportionate or nothing is out of place. So in that regard, I think this is a great motorcycle. Now, if you check the handlebar, it's again, it's quite low. It's not uh, raised up. So it doesn't feel like an adventure bike in that regard. But you've got these nice knuckle guards over here. And uh, the speedometer, the instrument cluster, is exactly the same as the regular Jixxer. So you've got Bluetooth connectivity, you've got a gear change indicator and the works. So overall, I think in terms of features, in terms of uh, overall appeal, I find it quite exciting. I think this bike looks quite great. So the overall quality is also quite decent. It's not bad. It's not great either, but it is uh, satisfactory, I'd say. Now, uh, the most important thing is, of course, the riding position. And you sit here quite relaxed. The foot pegs are positioned neutrally, so you can sit here in a relaxed manner, you can do long distance very easily. So yesterday we rode it around for 150 kilometers and it was quite comfortable and the seat is also quite nice. Now, uh, the other thing is if you want to take it off-road, well, of course, it can do a little bit of off-roading. I'll tell more about that uh, later, but in terms of uh, ergonomics, well, of course, it's not an off-roader. The bars are really low. So if you want to stand up and uh, ride it, you really have to bend down. So it's not ideal. Within two or three minutes, it's going to tire you out. Another thing is the foot peg positioning. So uh, of course it's neutral, but if you stand up, you can see uh, if you put your toe on the peg, well, your foot is on the exhaust. So uh, not very practical. So if you want to stand up and ride, well, of course this thing bugs you all the time. But uh, overall, I think uh, this is more of a road bike. I'd say 80% road and 20% off-roading. It can manage rough roads. But overall, I think this is more of a uh, sports tourer rather than an outright adventure motorcycle. Now coming to the most important aspect, uh, the engine performance and ride and handling. So we'll start with the performance first. Of course, this is a very familiar unit. It's a 249cc oil-cooled unit and the specs are exactly the same as the Jixxer. So this produces around 26 bhp and 22 newton meters of torque. Now the engine has good low end grunt and when you're riding in the city or even on the highway, first, second, third gears are quite short so you can ride it very comfortably. Now the engine's character is exactly the same as the Jixxer so uh, there is decent low end. The mid range is kind of flat but it is strong and you have a very strong top end. So the engine overall I think I really like it because it has got a very punchy performance throughout the rev range. Of course uh, it starts vibrating around 5000 rpm and from 5000 rpm till about 10,000 rpm 
which is where it redlines well uh, everything starts to buzz progressively so as you go up the rev range well the vibrations become worse and worse uh, especially from the foot pegs and the handlebar but the great thing about this part train is that it comes with a 6 speed gearbox so on the highway you can cruise uh, comfortably at 120 km per hour that's what i uh, realized of course we are riding in the hills so we couldn't really ride it fast but i think overall as a tourer it will be great on open stretches of roads now the other thing is in the hills well this motorcycle of course it has that typical suzuki trait so it is a very balanced handler it feels quite right now the only problem i had uh, in terms of handling is that it comes with a bigger front uh, wheel which is a 19 incher so the steering is kind of slow it doesn't tip in quite easily and when you're riding in the hills that's quite evident now of course uh, immediately you don't feel uh, that to be natural but uh, once you familiarize with the motorcycle of course it feels normal now the tires are basically sort of off-roadish i mean they're semi-block pattern so on the road uh, they don't have that sort of grip which you would get on a normal road tires so with the block pattern well the edge grip it kind of suffers and you can feel the front end doesn't inspire a lot of confidence and that's uh, down to the tire i think it's not about the suspension the suspension the overall setup it's slightly stiff but i think that works for me because handling wise this bike is quite great it's quite stable around corners it's just that it doesn't change direction that quickly as you would like now coming to the comfort and ride quality but i think in that department also it's quite sorted uh, it has like i said a stiff suspension there is an underlying stiffness when you're riding this motorcycle on all the roads so uh, especially at the rear it felt a little stiff but uh, overall the ride quality was quite supple and even if you go over bad roads it is quite absorbent so uh, as a tourer i think i really liked it because we uh, rode it on some bad roads we rode it on some very good roads in the hills and everywhere and i think this bike it is not excellent in one department but uh, it is sort of balanced in every sort of setting and that's what an adv is supposed to do and i think in that regard this motorcycle well it is a very balanced product So the V-Strom is all good on the road and that was kind of expected. But is it as good off-road? Well, there's no straightforward answer and that's both a good and a bad thing. Let's start with the least impressive bits first. Now even though it looks like an adventure-ready motorcycle with long travel suspension, this isn't actually the case. The front forks have only 120mm of travel and if you compare this to the Himalayan, it's 80mm less. And that means there is a good chance of the V-Strom quickly running out of travel and bottoming out while doing jumps or going over big rocks. Secondly, the riding position. I've already mentioned this earlier, but the bars are placed too low and the exhaust constantly rubs against your right foot. This means you can't stand up and ride for a very long time. Plus, it's got a seat height of 835mm, which makes it substantially taller than the Himalaya saddle at 800mm. Then there's the ABS. It's not switchable and the system kicks in rather aggressively when it detects slip, which again isn't that great when you're on loose surfaces. Lastly, the brakes have a very wooden feel too, and that's something that you notice while riding it on the tarmac as well. So overall, the V-Storm SX is not an outright off-roader or as rugged as a Himalayan, that's for sure. That said, there are a couple of things that are very likable about the V-Storm when you take it off-road. First off, it's a lightweight motorcycle. It weighs just 167 kilograms, which makes it more than 30 kgs lighter than the Himalayan. This is quite evident on the move too, as the Suzuki is much lighter and easier to handle off-road. Next up is the ground clearance of 205 mm, which is also more than adequate for light off-roading. As for the suspension, it may not have a lot of travel, but it's taut and firm, and this results in a more communicative and planted front end feel when you're riding over uneven surfaces. The tires are very grippy too. And the best part is the engine's tractability. Even at speeds below 30, it pulls effortlessly in second gear and the low end grunt is very strong. On the whole, with a couple of modifications, I feel the V-Storm can be turned into a very capable and enjoyable off-roader. So overall, I have to say that I'm quite impressed with this motorcycle. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, but it has got that typical Suzuki trait. It has got everything going for it. Of course, if you have to pinpoint some of the negatives, I'd say it's not an outright off-roader, but 
with a couple of modifications you can do that uh, especially the bars where well, you can just raise it and it will be perfect off road i was riding it off road and i think the suspension was really suited for the job and you can really do long distance riding with this motorcycle in terms of comfort also i think it's pretty much there and uh, it is as comfortable as any other entry level adv now uh, what seals the deal for me is the pricing because this bike is priced at 2 lakh 11000 now it's in the same territory as the royal enfield himalayan but i think this motorcycle offers more in the sense it is a great road bike it has also got decent performance off road and i think on the highway because it has got six gears and it has got more performance so you can cruise on it very comfortably so uh, overall i think if you are looking for an adv especially for the road and you want to ride long distance you want a reliable travel free motorcycle well i think the suzuki v strom sx has everything going for it